Martin Garrix once said, I want to show everyone that if you pursue your dreams, they can come true no matter what. And as much as I agree with him, there is many traps and road blockers, and if you are not aware of them, they can keep you from ever achieving your dreams. During my last year and a half of my journey in music production, I've run into a lot of them. And I've also seen them stop or slow down many other talented music producers. So today I wanted to share with you six music production habits that I stopped to become a better producer and reach my goals faster. In this video, we will be talking about traps that you can make inside the DAW but also outside the DAW so that after this video you will be more prepared and maximize your chances of success. So the first habit that I stopped and made me a better producer instantly is to stop downloading all the free samples and presets pack that I could find online. Yes they are great but there are a couple catch to it. Free doesn't mean the best. Most of them sound pretty beginner-ish or aren't professional and we know that sound selection is one of the most important thing in music production so you might want to hold off if they're not the best quality. Another thing Thing is that downloading all the samples that you see you end up with way too many choices and then you lose time when you're producing because you don't know which one to choose. I personally don't have that many, maybe like 10 maximum that I use all the time and I know exactly which one I go for. I know which one sounds good from the source and I win some time and quality. Now another bad producer habit and a very popular one is to not finish songs. I hear so many producers telling me that they're not gonna finish this one because they think it sucks now or they're not sure how to finish it or they start started another idea. But if you never finish songs, you never practice all the steps that goes into music production from start to finish. You never practice composition, arrangement, mixing, mastering, or even music marketing. I really believe that the more you make songs, the better you get, so finish this idea before starting another one. And as long as this song is better than the last one you released, you're doing great. For example, back in April 2021, I was stuck on Still Alive. I was so stuck, I wanted to give up so bad, I almost hated it at some point. But I didn't. And if I didn't finish this one, I wouldn't have had the knowledge to make the next one behind my eyes because it was more advanced, right? It was better. And that's how it works. Progress requires trials and errors, so go finish that unfinished song and you will thank me later. <laughs> Alright, now I know this one is going to be controversial, but it is my experience, my opinion, and I wanted to share it with you. It is not a secret that social media apps like Instagram, TikTok are trying to keep us on their platforms for as long as they can. And for me, short form content isn't bringing me actual knowledge, it's just making me lose my time in 95% of the cases. If I want to actually learn and practice, I took the habit to sit down choose a video, watch it from start to finish without skipping it, <laughs> and even practice with my DAW open at the same time. For me, it's the only way to really understand the concepts that you are being taught. You need to pay attention if you want to learn and acquire knowledge. There is no shortcut. Learn mixing and mastering in five minutes? Doesn't exist. How to make future bounce in five minutes? Doesn't exist either. I don't know you, but if I watch a one minute video on Logic Pro, you know, to teach me like a workflow trick or something, I'm not gonna remember it after watching 10, 15, other reels or videos on TikTok. They're, I'm not gonna remember anything what was the trick. How many times did that happen to you? And I'm sure if you think about it, you can tell me which video you just watched before mine. <laughs> So if you really want to learn and progress, put some real time down to practicing and learning rather than watching a thousand short videos that you won't remember five minutes after. So I know how tempting it is to buy all the plugins of your favorite artists or YouTubers, but in most cases, you don't really need them. I've seen so many times producers buying so many plugins and ending up not even using them. Especially in the beginning, it is better to understand the stock plugins or the free plugins that you have and understand how they work rather than buying expensive plugins because they're not the solution. And this will save you money and make you a better producer. Another thing I learned the hard way is to say yes to everyone and every collab. Don't get me wrong, they're great. But you also need your own projects to experiment and develop your own style. There is such thing as taking on too much, believe me, and it doesn't result in anything good. I myself had to cancel many collabs recently because it was just too much. I was speeding to make everything work, but not to actually make a good song. But to be honest, I also wanted to work on my own projects because I felt like at this point I was just working for everyone else <laughs> but me. So choose wisely who you work with, but keep a good balance between collabs and your own projects. The last trap is the number one. Like numbers, not number one. 
think you got me. Focusing on numbers is not a good way to go about it. It won't push you to take the right actions or the right attitude to market your music. And yes, I'm talking about copy pasting direct links to Spotify to everyone in your DM saying out now. If instead you focus on the music and the journey, one, you will enjoy it more and you will be less obsessed about numbers and mentally it makes a huge difference. Which also sometimes they don't mean anything, believe me. But second, you will put the music first when promoting it and that's how you will actually get streams and views. By that, I mean genuinely connecting with other artists or music lovers and making content around your music, evoking emotions or explaining its meaning. Because if you just ask people you don't know to stream now, it doesn't give them any reason to actually go spend time listening to your music. And this is Mystic 101 in music marketing. You need to give them a reason to go listen to your song. You need to make them understand that there is something for them, that it's for them that they should listen to the music, that it will bring them something, not just for you. Trigger emotions in them through messages or content. That's how you will get them to be interested in what you do. And on another note, I feel so much better since I don't give a care about how much streams I get on my songs. Really. <laughs> if you take Martin Garrix, for example, when he talks about music, it is contagious. You feel how passionate he is, right? All his songs have a meaning with the lyrics and all. And every time I'm like, yeah, I want to listen to your music, you know, because he gives me a reason to. Show that you care about them, that you have something to offer them, because that's how it works. You always need to give first before asking. So in the end, I totally agree with Martin there, and I hope that this video was helpful for you and that you feel more prepared to succeed in your dreams. If it was, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps me out a ton. For more inspiration and motivation, you can watch these videos here, but in the meantime, keep learning and I'll see you in the next one.